much I would like to uh, to thank very much to uh, Dr. Pomorski for invitation of me to deliver this talk. Uh, and uh, the title is Different Scherma Models and Their Applications. Uh, maybe at the beginning. Uh, the goals are uh, a short presentation of idea of soliton. Why, why soliton? Because skirmion is a special kind of soliton. Next, a short presentation of skirma model and its applications, and short presentation of some skirma-like models and their applications, especially of uh, models uh, including magnetic skirmions, and I would like to illustrate uh, some exact skirmion solution on, the co on a concrete example. Uh, we consider so-called restricted baby skirma model uh, on plane, and we derive the so-called Bogomolny equations for this model, and we solve exactly these equations, so-called uh, Cauchy problem for the, these equations, and uh, the results uh, mentioned in the points one, two, were published in this paper this year. This is an open access, so any, anyone can uh, can can uh, look and read this paper. Okay. Uh, solitons have uh, rather long history. In next year. Uh, will be very, very beautiful anniversary of a first confirmed observation of solitary wave making made by Russell on a channel in Scotland. In briefly speaking, soliton, uh, exactly a solitary wave, so uh, this is a special kind of solitary wave, which is collision resistant while interacting with other similar waves. So after the collision, uh, the uh, shape and the velocity, the kinetic energy, are conserved. So this is very unusual, un uh, unusual behavior in comparison to behavior of usual waves. The first equation describing uh, solitons was, of course, Korteweg de Vries equation uh, in 1954. So-called Fermi Pasta Ulam Tsingu experiment uh, was done, and uh, ten years later, famous Zabuski Kuskas paper was published, and this paper uh, show a connection between uh, Fermi Pasta Ulam Tsingu uh, experiment, KDV equation, and of course the solitary wave dis discovered by Russell. So second half of 60s of the 20th century. Uh, begins Soliton's era, Soliton's era. And now the Skirma model. Skirma model was proposed by Tony Hitler and Hinton Skirm. And first, first uh, paper was in, uh, as I remember, in 1957 or 58. And of course, in next years, uh, and this provides a description of a low energy limit of quantum chromodynamics. This was the first original application of Kirma model. Yes, so baryons in this model are described by the quantized states of classical soliton solutions of the equations of this model. Of course, such equations are very complicated uh, partial differential, nonlinear partial differential equations of second order. Uh, in nature, uh, in classical, <laughs> when, when we uh, say about, when we tell about classical phenomena in nature, a majority of the phenomena are described by nonlinear equation. Even the so called uh, physical pendulum very simple system, physical system, in general, is described by a nonlinear differential equation. Uh, quantum mechanics is linear, as we know, but uh, classical physics uh, use rather uh, nonlinear terms in the equations. And this, of course, is a um, very big trouble 
uh, as far as solving such equations is concerned. In further years, Schirmer-like models started to be investigated. For example, schirmer fadier model, full baby Schirmer model, restricted baby Schirmer model, and so far and so far. For example, the analogons were uh, an interaction with electromagnetic field has been considered. Uh, about the applications, because one can uh, ask what about applications. Yes, applications of uh, solitons in general, uh, this is very important result uh, from 1980, uh, result uh, get by Molenauer and his research group, very important applications of optical solitons predicted seven years uh, before this uh, discover by Hasegawa and Tappert, namely, we can say about, we can tell about a transfer of information uh, 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 by using optical solitons. They are the solutions of nonlinear Schrodinger equation. Very interesting objects, magnetic skirmions. Magnetic skirmions, uh, when we have so-called jawoshinsky moria interaction. And this is the energy function of model of magnetic screen. So it's the so-called um, tensor of jawoshinsky moria interaction and some promising potential applications. Uh, next generation high density storage, beta storage and future microwave devices due to small size of screenions and their special topological properties. Uh, of course, one can tell uh, about applications of magnetic screenions in spintronic devices. So this is very, very important. And I would like to mention, mention here about one of important results, namely uh, 10 years ago, Roaming and his research group demonstrated in the paper, then one can control the generation and annihilation of skirmions using an uh, STM, the tunneling method. Namely, um, they uh, made an injection of spin polarized currents. And the effect was such that they produced skirmions by reducing the magnetic field and uh, by injection of higher energy electrons through local voltage sweeps. A very uh, interesting observation. Namely, one can tailor switching rate and direction by modulating the current parameters. And I recommend a uh, very interesting survey of this and other results. Yes. And for example, I would like to, to show this paper of Chang and his colleagues, yes. And this is according to uh, permissions because this is an open access mode. So you can see here, spin configuration of several different type of magnetic skirmions. And, and they are stabilized, there, there is a stabilization uh, owing to uh, non-trivial topolo topo topology, so topological number. So, so we have we have here very uh, interesting connection between a branch of mathematics which uh, seems at first view as very abstract, yes, topology, and with the real physical objects, yes, and of course the applications. So, due to existing uh, of such topological charge, we can say that uh, skirmion is a topological soliton. So this is localized object. And for example, here we have the uh, illustration of skirmion manipulation using local currents for, uh, from a STM tip. So I very strongly recommend this paper because uh, here we can uh, we can track the um, uh, different uh, investigation on magnetic solitons and their applications. 
So now uh, let's go back to, to my presentation. And what about uh, the equations? Because uh, in physics, we uh, want to, compa to compare the theoretical pred predictions with experimental data. So first of all, of course, because uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, rather theoretical physics, physicist, so I deal with equations. Yes, of course, the equations uh, should, and the solutions should possess physical sense. Okay, so uh, several uh, words about Bogomolny equations. Uh, and next we uh, shall go to the um, Skirma, restricted by the Skirma model. Okay, uh, so let's consider Euler-Lagrange equations for the model so-called phi to 4 with spontaneous symmetry breaking. These Euler-Lagrange equations have the following form. And one can write uh, energy functional as an integral of a such form plus such term. Energy functional from which this earlier Lagrange follow. And if one requires reaching the minimum by the functional one, so the first term must vanish, and we get Bogomolny equations, equation, because in this case it's only one equation. Sometimes they are called as BPS equation uh, from uh, Bogomolny Prasad, Belavin Prasad Summerfield, because uh, these people are also uh, were also involved in, in the investigations of. Of the same result, which is known uh, today as Bogomolny equations, and very well-known solutions of of this uh, Bogomolny equation, so-called kink. So the functional one attains its minimum when the such uh, such uh, equality holds. So we have here uh, the co a connection between energy, more exactly speaking, minimum of energy and uh, absolute value of topological charge. So we, we have here a connection between energy and topology. Now, uh, these equations uh, can be derived using classical method called as completing the square. This very classical method used since about 50 years. But uh, there are some other methods of deriving Bogomolny equations. Stone necessary conditions method introduced by Sokalski in 1979 and developed by, by him and his group. <coughs> A systematic approach to deriving Bogomolny equations using this method was published in this paper. First order formalism, uh, Bazoya, Brito, Costa, Gomez, Lozano, uh, Marcus Menezes, Oliveira, Rodriguez, Rosenfeld, Salafan. Onsel method, Atmaya, Ramadan, BPS Lagrangian method, Atmaya, first order Euler Lagrange formalism, Adam and Santa Maria. A development, some development of strong necessary conditions method. And uh, here are the colleges of our group, uh, of Sokalski group, uh, Joachim, uh, Lisowski, Vietecha. Uh, Danuta Sokalska and me. And in further part uh, of this talk, uh, I would like to present the reading of Bogomolny equations using SNCM. And next, what is a, an exact solution of this Bogomolny equations? And what interesting property properties of these solutions we can observe? Okay, so baby Skirme model is an analogical model to the full Skirme model. Full Skirme model is formulated in three-dimensional space. And this is very well-known fact that for the Skirme model, one cannot derive Bogomolny equation. And this is a very interesting fact that this was observed by Tony 
Hilton Skirm uh, about 15 years uh, or more years before Bogomolny equations. And this baby Skirm model can be applied to describe quantum color effects. Target space of Skirm model is used as U2. And the target space of baby Skirm model is this two dimensional sphere. In this both models, Skirma and baby Skirma, static field configurations can be classified topologically by their winding numbers. So we have an opportunity to get here topologically stabilized non trivial solutions. And this is the Lagrangian of baby Skirma model. And of course, we consider static version uh, of this model and we have the energy functional of the, of the following form. In the full baby screen model, there is a static sigma term. Here, this is absent because we consider restricted baby screen model. Okay, we make stereographic projection. We get such function, uh, such Hamiltonian density. <coughs> of course, one can uh, apply extremum principle to this function, to the uh, Hamiltonian density, uh, we get, one can get uh, Euler-Lagrange equations. However, these equations are uh, non-linear and strongly non-linear. They are partial differential equations and they are the equations of second order. So uh, this, this last property uh, is also can also cause uh, uh, problems with solving of such equations. Uh, and instead of uh, considering older Lagrange equations, one consider strong necessary conditions. So we require um, vanishing of the pieces of this older Lagrange equations. This piece. And this piece, this piece, and this fragment, this fragment, and this fragment. So we uh, call such equations as, as strong necessary conditions. Of course, all solutions of the following system are automatically solutions of the Euler Lagrange equation. However, there is <coughs> such danger that, that uh, very often, uh, solutions of uh, of a system five six uh, will be rather trivial. So, in order to avoid such situation, we make gauge transformation of the functional in such way that such gauge transformation does not change does not change Euler Lagrange equations. However, change the strong necessary conditions. So we have to add to the original functional, so-called invariant. Invariant uh, is such functional that its local variation with respect to U vanishes. So all the Lagrange equations are invariant with respect to the, this above uh, gauge transformation. In contrary to the strong necessary condition, because this last one, uh, well, this last ones change. So one, uh, we observe how this works in the case of the restricted baby screen model. We add to the original Hamiltonian, <coughs> excuse me, Hamiltonian density, the densities of the invariants. Uh, if we, if you add. If we add these invariants, these densities of the invariants here, one can check very easily that the Euler Lagrange equations are the same as without this gauge transformations. And the uh, functions GK are some functions which are to be determined later. For several minutes, you will see that these functions are very important. Now we all, only assume that these functions are the functions of uh, class C2. 
big dx and b uh, big dy are the usual total derivatives with respect to x and y. Omega is uh, an, um, uh, a complex function. Yes, omega is connected to the spin, classical spin vector by uh, stereographic projection. Now, we apply the concept of strong necessary conditions to this density of function, uh, density of Hamiltonian to num uh, the formula number seven, and we get the so-called dual equations. So we insert this Hamiltonian density into these equations five, six, and we get such uh, very, very unpleasant equations. Uh, they uh, seem to be very complicated. However, don't worry. Uh, the situation will, uh, will be more simple for a moment. Now we have to make these equations self-consistent. In this order, we focus on the equations 10 to 13. We make this system of these equations of a system of a linear dependent equation. Okay, and we, uh, aha, and very important uh, remark, from the equations eight, nine, we obtain, we will obtain a differential, differential equation to the potential V. And this is very important. Uh, satisfying by the potential V, this condition, this differential equation, derived for a moment, is the is the uh, necessary condition for existing Bogomolny equations for a given model. In many uh, models, much models, for case of much models of of, of some th few theoretical models, uh, the potential does not satisfy the uh, condition of existence of Bogomolny equations in this case. So deriving such Bogomolny equation for such model by using the classical method completing the square is not possible very often. In this case, this is possible. So, okay. Uh, we eliminate in the equations Nine, uh, eight to nine, uh, the, uh, by using the equations 10 to 13, all terms, including the derivatives of omega and omega star, yes, and we integrate obtained relations, obtained differential equation for potential V, and we get such formula. We put next, the function g2 and g3 present in this invariance, we put as constants. So the uh, forms of the equations 8, 9 uh, bec become uh, more simple. So we obtain the, so, uh, the following uh, condition for the potential v. Thus, the function g1, and let's uh, uh, remind that g1 appears here in the invariant i1. This function g1 is connected to the potential v by the equation 16. And we insert this, insert this function g1 into these equations 10 to 13, and we get one equation. And this is just Bogomolny equation, or Bogomolny decomposition for restricted baby screen model in, uh, on the plane for arbitrary potential, for arbitrary potential. The analytical result can be obtained also in the case of three-dimensional BPS screen model. And this is only the final result. So for 
this very interesting role of a constant C2, because for the zero constant C2, we can we have the usual Bogomolny equations for BPS Kremer model. For positive constant C2, we obtain non Bogomolny equation, and this coincides with non zero pressure equation. So, this is very, very interesting fact that BPS Kirma model, or in general, Kirma model, has an application in description of neutron star. So, the role of pressure is causes very important. Okay, and this is the uh, analogical uh, computations uh, concerning the uh, Heisenberg model of ferromagnet. But let's go further. If you want, if you are interested in, in this fragment of my slides, of course, I can go back later to this fragment. Now about, we are interested in solving exactly obtained uh, Bogomolny equations, the equations number 17. For, of course, a concrete form of potential V. Okay, so let's uh, choose the potential of the so-called Mexican hat form. And we use hedgehog ansatz. Uh, we put the, uh, for the simplicity, we put here the constant C1 as zero. And we use hedgehog ansatz. We insert this ansatz into the uh, equation 17, and we get uh, the um, usual ordinary differential equation. We formulate Cauchy problem. Cauchy problem, as you know, is uh, such problem that you want to find uh, a solution of a given partial differential equation or differential ordinary differential equation and this solution have has to satisfy uh, the, the value of this solution of the unknown function uh, should be equal to a concrete value yes in this case we put c, c0 as two of course we are interested in obtaining of localized solutions so we impose also <clears throat> uh, asymptotic conditions, uh, asymptotic conditions uh, which require that uh, the functions f and h, the Hamiltonian density, should attain uh, a constant value in the plus and minus infinity. And we solve this problem, and we have, after some simplification, we have such solution was the so-called Lambert function, and this solution is actually localized, and its energy density is also localized. If you insert this solution into the Hamiltonian density H, yeah, for the, of course the potential V is on the form uh, Mexican hat, Yes, and so far and so far, you simplify, you simplify. Uh, of course, you use the Hitchcock answer and so far, you will go, get uh, the result that the Hamiltonian density is localized. This is one interesting property. However, there's another interesting property. Namely, <coughs> if you insert the obtained solution, this solution, into gauge transform into gauge transformed Hamiltonian density. So uh, let's remind that uh, the Hamiltonian density was gauged by using invariance. So uh, it turns out that gauge transform Hamiltonian density for this solution is equal to zero, but ungaged. Hamiltonian density is non-zero. Engaged is localized. So we can hear, uh, we can see here uh, the, the, the degeneracy of the Hamiltonian. Yes, 
And of course, we have <clears throat> like here such fact that this corresponds to the fact that we uh, one considers two versions of phi theoretical Lagrangian engaged and gauged on total derivatives of any function of phi variables. Then the Euler Lagrange equations are invariant with respect to gauging. However, the energy momentum tensors will be different. So such uh, very such uh, fact, the, the very similar fact was observed uh, was established in Hosoya's paper in 1978 for some two young Miss family models in uh, Isotero case, and for other theoretical models in, 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 in these papers. So the effect of the degeneracy of Hamiltonian for the restricted by Bescrima model had been presented uh, in, in the paper mentioned by me at the beginning of, of this presentation. So this is uh, all my presentation. And of course, at the end, I would like to thank very much to <coughs> Professor Smityushev, Pomorski, Sokalski, Stensen, and Bereshtinsky for very interesting remarks. And also grateful for Professor Lisowski for very interesting and stimulating discussions. And uh, for Dr. Reichel for the support. And thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, so you are welcome. I would like to, uh, if, I, if I'm allowed, I would like to uh, do you see my website now? No, not yet. Not, not? yet. Ah, uh, not yet. Okay, so I would like to. This is 